you've written this book, the book of gutsy women. Right. Now you wrote this with I wrote Chelsea. with with my daughter. Yeah, we did. I'm going to go down this list of some people. I think you got right. But by the way, I, like I say, these are the Academy Awards yes. voted on by you and your daughter. That's true. We did. These are the <laughs> best a- women that you could find. Uh, examples of great gutsy yeah. and women. You both and had the to book, literally the book could have been like a thousand pages long. That's, right. That's right. not. But uh, you both had to agree on each yes. choice. And we wrote over 200, Robin, and then we had to cut it in half. Wow. So it was it was, it was a challenging process. Now before I get to that, I got to ask you one question that's always i bring this up all the time my father put this thought in my head he used to say to me if the american public could see camp david Mm -hmm. there would be a revolution in this country that in other words our presidents are being treated like kings my father says that a great president would get rid of camp david this is my father's what is camp Camp David? david is truly a camp first of all it's a military base right okay and it is rustic it is not like a like a, it's not a palace. No, it's not a palace. There, Why won't they show it to us? Well, there have been, I, you know, there there are pictures. There's lots of pictures online right. um, of, you know, when um, uh, President Carter had meetings there. I mean, just the most recent, uh, you know, President Obama. And apparently uh, Trump is going to have the G7 there. Right. Obama had the G7 Now there. that he can't have it in his hotel. He can't have it at his hotel. Right. right. <laughs> uh, so it, it's very rustic. There's nothing... So it's not palatial. No, not at all. And I mean, there. So my father's wrong. He was wrong. Yes. Yeah, but because, but I I bet in his time there weren't very many pictures. Uh, Right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I know my father's got to hang up with that. I'm talking about the book now. Just uh, and and believe me, I would like to get awards from you. From like, I'd like to know who your favorite congressperson was. I was going to say, I bet it's uh, when Lyndon Johnson was a congressman because, or Tip O'Neill. Because those guys could bring together Republicans right. and Democrats. They got things Actions, done. Yeah. They got things done. And there was a guy, yeah. Allard Lowenstein was another Oh, one. he was a good guy. Wasn't he yeah. a good guy? Yeah, he was a good guy. And he yeah. got assassinated. Mm. Nobody makes a big deal about that. You know, there have been uh, some really tragic stories like that of yes. members of Congress. Mm. You know? It's scary. Yeah, yeah, it is scary. Well, that's why I say becoming first lady and then becoming a senator. And, and then, then running for president. And then running yeah. for president. And yeah. they're still screaming... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, lock her up and everything. I know, I know. I'd be, I'd be very scared. Uh, well, you know, look, you can't be scared. You, you can't. You, you, know, you just can't. You can't let that. But you have you. Secret Service. Yes, I do. And and and, that and your makes husband. makes a big difference. It yeah. does. As as a as a former president, former first lady, right. we have it. Yeah. How, how do you live your life though if you're under the constant gaze now since you were first lady? You know, you, I, Howard, you just have to live your life. I mean, really, you just have to get Can up every day. Can you do anything normal? You don't go to a supermarket. I do. You sure do. I do. Absolutely. But you got two dudes, I two big guys know. hanging out. No, they, you. you know, they they'll, they'll yeah, wait a little. They hang back. They hang back. They hang back. Yeah, they're not they're not out there squeezing the cantaloupes with me. I would love to see what goes on. <laughs> do you and Bill ever say, you know, why go out tonight? It's just going to be too much of a scene. It's too much. Let's just stay home. Well, we probably have done that in the last 25 years. That's true. Right. But most of the time, you know, we say, let's go to the movies. We go to the movies. Let's go out to dinner. We go out and to dinner. And these guys sit behind you yeah, during the yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't do. mind that. Yeah. That, they don't sit bad. right next to you. No, they don't sit next to us. They sit behind us. Yeah. And it's, it, it works. Believe me, it works. But it probably is a good thing for you, Howard, because they don't let people sit next to them. Oh, first of all, I would love I would love to have a full Secret Service Absolutely detail. Absolutely, he would. i got to tell you something. I don't want to meet anybody. I'm unlike you and Bill. Well, you can hire some guys to go around with, you know, things in their ears and Well, sunglasses. I'm going to confess something. Yeah. I went to the movie. I went to see uh, the, the Mr. Rogers movie. Yeah. I had a guy sitting behind me. <laughs> did you really? Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, but, you know, part of it is. I did. <laughs> when you're as well, I don't didn't trust tell us that until now. As, when well, I'm telling well my, my, my my secretary of state and my and my president <laughs> within the cone of silence here. There you uh, go. Yeah, look, when you're as well known and as recognizable as you are and as I am, yeah, you just have to figure that it's going to happen. So, like when we go to the theater, um, you know, we sit on the aisle because we know people are going to come up, and that right. way. You know, we can get the selfie. We can stand up and shake hands without the worst, bothering people. Are selfies the worst thing that ever happened it, to a it, politician? I mean, it, come on. Well, yeah, I'll tell you what. You don't always want to take a No, you don't picture. always want to. And, you know, I right. mean, obviously, sometimes you wish you hadn't. But right. it, it is what here's what I miss about it. So even when I ran in 08 for president, certainly when I ran for the Senate and in all of Bill's campaigns, you know, you would do an event and then you would go do what's called the rope line, you know, where the audience was mm-hmm. and you'd shake hands 
And in that interaction, people would say something to you. They might say, please keep fighting for health care. I have a child with a disability. Or they might say, here's my letter. I'm a vet and I can't get good care. I mean, you would have a real human interaction, okay? By 2016, let's take a selfie. Let's take a selfie. That's you, all it's about. And, and you would you would not learn anything about what was going on in that mm. person's life. When and I miss that. When you got criticized for maybe not going to every state and shaking every hand, like everyone was playing Monday yeah. morning quarterback. Yeah, of oh, course, right? Hillary lost for this yeah, reason. Yeah. She lost for that reason, this and that. And, you know, who knows? I'm sure right. you did your own Monday morning I quarterback. Did. Like I maybe did. I, could... I wrote a whole book about it. I know. Did you, <laughs> did, you, did, did you feel like maybe if you had gone to some diner somewhere in, uh, you know, I don't know, in the middle of uh, yeah. nowhere yeah. And, sh- and shook somebody's hand, it would have made a difference? You never know that. I mean, first, I did, I did go to a lot of the places, um, maybe they not say enough, you didn't, right. that, but I did. But I think that this election uh, turned on other factors. I think, um, you know, look, the Russians and WikiLeaks really did a job on me, both in terms of the way they weaponized information and then the way that they... And they're going to do it again. They're doing it again. Right. And they're doing it to whoever else is going to be up there. And I think, you know, the Comey letter, 10 days before the election, killed me. Oh, and that was it, awful. It was unbelievably awful. How do you get over that pain of Comey doing that to you? It, it was so shocking. And I thought that I had made it through. But then I went back and, and for my book, what happened, I looked at a lot of polling. Like, for example. I can't believe you went back and looked at I that. I did because I wanted to figure it out. Because, look, you know, if you if you do something, you throw yourself into it for two years and it doesn't work out the way you think it will and the way that everybody also believed it would what went on what happened so there was all kinds of stuff and i and i've told this to everybody running who i've talked to and i've talked to most not all i've said look you, you can talk, run, you the current crop current of people. crop right. i said you can run the best campaign and you can get the nomination but here are four things you got to watch out for number one voter suppression the other side wants to shrink the electorate they don't want everybody to vote they want to try to cut out you know Minorities and young people and whatever. Okay. Number two, if you haven't had your personal email stolen, it will be, but I bet it already has been. It's banked somewhere. And they will use it to try to paint a picture of you that is totally untrue and make stuff up. Who of us could uh, have our personal email stolen and look good? Well, very but, few. But even if it's nothing insidious, illegal, you unethical, can twist anything. you can twist anything. And right. And then thirdly, they're going to lie about you repetitively on social media, particularly Facebook, and they're going to target it at people who are susceptible to that. And you read this stuff and you have to sit there every time and say, do I just ignore it or do I take it on? You know, here, I'll tell you. So there was a study done after my election by Ohio State University, and they went and found people that said they had voted for Obama in 2012 and voted for Trump in 2016. And they really dug in and said, "Okay, why, why, why? And it was all about what they saw on Facebook, because over 50 percent of Americans get their news from Facebook. That That's is right. crazy. Isn't that crazy? Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that they're How about not... the New York Times now is a bunch of liars. Well, I mean, it's the greatest newspaper ever. And, and they feed into it because they won't, you know, they won't draw lines. But so what happens with the, um, you know, the whole thing about oh, well, what do we believe and what do we not believe on all the rest is people now are genuinely confused. So these researchers said, okay, well, what did you believe? What changed your mind? Number one, she was dying. And they got they got news feeds from places like Macedonia or St. Petersburg. You know, the Russians were really good at this, where they had somebody looking like an American with American accent and English who would say, yet another expert has said that she has Parkinson's, she won't live out her term. Anyway, so second, that I had somehow gotten uh, arms to ISIS totally made up. I mean, beyond absurd. Third, that Pope Francis had endorsed Trump. They got it out there. Totally into people's Facebook feeds who only get news from Facebook or maybe get it supplemented by Fox. But, you know, so we're living in these very, you know, it's a weird time. It's very 1984. It's really hard. Did you did you have your first hundred days kind of planned in your head? Yes, I did. Here's my perception of the presidency. Yeah. Yeah. You get one shot. You get that first hundred days. Right. You got to pick really one thing you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get 50 things Mm -hmm. through. You're not going to get two things through. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to get one major push. And you would have had a tough time because you would have had a Republican Congress and Senate. Right. What was the one thing you you knew in the back of your mind you were going to get done if by any way possible? Well, 
taking on at that point, I, I was going to have to try to do more than one thing because right. we had to we had to shore up and save healthcare and try to get it on a much firmer footing and expand it. We had to figure out what we we're going to do about immigration, which is tearing this country apart. And it is the biggest cudgel that is used against people. And there and there the, the Senate passed a bipartisan bill in 2013 and the House wouldn't bring it up because they'd rather have a political issue than solve a problem. So right. that's where we are. On so that. you would have pushed on that. I would have pushed on that. Yeah. And I would have gotten people lined up as quickly as possible to get confirmed as judges. Do you think, yeah, I know. Do you think that uh, Trump is responsible for the good economy right now? Or do you think it was an Obama thing? Because as you mentioned, when Obama mm -hmm. came into office, it was a mess. Yeah. I'm talking about the economy. Right. We saw a constant uptick right. in the economy right. all through the Obama years. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as fast as people would like, but what the heck. Right. Going up and up and up and up. Right. The guy who comes in to, after Obama isn't necessarily in one day going to fix mm -hmm. the economy. Right. He's benefiting from whoever his predecessor was. Would right. that be your assessment? Or should Trump take a bow and say, hey, this is uh, my doing? Look, I think that the economy is largely operating because of what Obama did. And it was, as you remember, really hard. And it helped to spark the Tea Party because he made some tough decisions that, you know, saving industries that nobody thought should be saved, but for the good of the economy had to be saved. So I give the bulk of the credit still to Obama. What I Here's what I worry about. I think the economy is an, on kind of a, uh, right now, an even keel. But I do see some problems sort of forming underneath. I think these trade battles that he's picked, that he has been, you know, just bellicose about, um, are short-term wins, but medium and long-term losses. I think the tax cut, the huge tax cut, it was a boon for corporations and for the very wealthy, but it didn't bring about the kind of investments that you need to build the economy for everybody. So now you've got people who could not put together $400 in an emergency, Howard. You know, that, that's bad. And, and car payments are way behind schedule. People are late on car payments. Credit card debt is going back up again because even though we have a lot of people working, it's not as many people as a percentage of the population as it was when Bill was there. And so we got some slack in the economy. So look, I'm, I'm glad. I mean, I'm not one of these people who cheers and hopes for a collapsed economy. I, that's not, that's too much pain for people. I would never do that. Right. But I do worry that we're not on a solid trajectory. When you were standing in the, uh, I guess they call it a situation room behind Obama, they're about to kill bin Laden. Right. You knew that was a huge moment, right? Huge. Were you thinking again, this could have been my presidency. No, really. No. Were and, you glad in a way it wasn't? Because that's a that's a heavy thing when you see these guys going in. And well, I I I recommend it. You know, there was a split among his advisors, and I was one. I was in the small group that said go after him and and go ahead and do it with uh, a Navy SEAL uh, team. And you watched the whole operation go we down. Did. We did. Are you allowed to go home and tell your husband? that this has happened. No, you're not. No. And I, no, I, once it happened and the president announced it, yes. No, I mean, before but I'll you, the president no. announces it. So here's a funny story. So the raid takes place. Yeah. And then we each had calls to make. I had calls to certain leaders and, and members of the Senate. Uh, Obama was calling all the former presidents. So he gets Bill on the phone. He goes, well, you know, Hillary's probably told you this, but and Bill said, told me what? So, no, I didn't tell anybody. Wow. I mean, it was like, it, it was one of the most intense public experiences I've ever had. And here was, in my view, the right way to make a presidential decision. So there was a small group of us and we were, we were meeting, we met numerous times. We looked at all the different angles. We looked at all of the intelligence to figure out, was this real or not? And that was not an easy decision. And then the president would come in and meet and, and we would go through it with him. And then the final day of our last meeting, he went around the table and he asked everybody to tell him what they thought. Was Biden there? Biden was there. What did he Gates. say? Go, don't do it. Yeah, right. Biden said, don't do it. Gates said, don't do it. I mean, mm. you know, because the risks were enormous. Right. You were going to fly into Pakistani airspace, land in a place called Abbottabad, which happened to be where the Pakistani military academy is like West Point and launch an assault to take out 
the you know the most horrific terrorist in our history. So you don't fault Biden for saying no. I no, mean, I don't he, fault. I, here's my point: was in this room, this was presidential decision making because we all said what we thought, but he had to make the decision, and he said, "I'm going to think about it. I'm going to sleep on it." And you know, I made my case as to why we should do it. I mean, I I felt a special responsibility having been in New York, New York the day yeah. afterwards and seeing all that. Were you like, oh, why doesn't he make up his mind? Because no. why should he sleep on it? Let's get in there. No, I admired that. You did? Yes. I do not like impulsive decision makers. Right. Uh, because. And he also know, listens to other he people. He listens and he probes. And why do you believe that? And why don't you believe that? You so, watched Bin Laden die. No, we, the, we, the video ended when the SEALs got into the complex, into the buildings. Because of a technical reason or because uh, you didn't want it? Didn't, I, I think both. I think right. both. Because, you know, you're, they had, you know, night vision uh, on and the cameras were on, but it would have been grainy and not very good. And why have that? Remember, I, I agreed with the president as well, uh, not to release pictures. Wow. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, so when when here's a, here's a story that I like to tell because most people don't know it. You know you know about you know you know about the seals going in. You may know that one of the helicopters crashed. That's right. And luckily we had tried to think of every possible scenario. So there had been another helicopter positioned nearby to come uh-huh. in to take out the seals. But the one that had crashed was a new stealth helicopter. It had to be blown up so that the technology wouldn't fall into the wrong hands. So. They, they kill bin Laden. They have to take his body out because we have to do the DNA back when they get to Afghanistan. So they have to blow up this helicopter. Those Navy SEALs, after having shot their way into that, killed the Kuwaiti courier, killed his brother, killed one of, you know, bin Laden's uh, adult sons, wounded one of the women who was after them. They took the women and children out and they took them to the other side of this big compound as far away from the helicopter uh, explosion as they could so they wouldn't be injured. That's when I think about the American military, that's who I think about. And I am sick to my stomach about what Trump did, pardoning, pardoning three men who had been test. They test were testified against by their own men because of the way they behaved. What so, is that? Well, I don't know what it is. It's his it's his perverse understanding of courage and and war um, in other words there are rules there are there have to be rules that's why i was so proud to tell that story what other military would you know, do that right, well, you know all of a sudden people are waking up we're monitoring all the chatter people are waking up they're climbing to their roofs they're only a mile away from this military academy and our guys take the time to move this family around first of all they didn't kill them and right. then they brought them to safety that's yeah. that's the american military that it, that it, i know it moves me it moves me when you describe this. It brings tears to my yeah, eyes. Mine that, too, that still. Because what a great, what a great bunch of guys. That's honor. That yes. is honor. And so you can't undermine that no. military experience and 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 the command, exactly. the chain of command, and that did level you, of quality of service. Exactly. Did uh, you do you? Yeah. Are there think? Listen, I'm just an ordinary schmo. You've been on the inside. Mm-hmm. The stuff you know that goes on. I'm talking about CIA, yeah. FBI, yeah. everything. In other words, should we be in a panic? Is the world out there even 50 times more dangerous than we even understand? Have we been saved and don't even know it? Oh, often, over and over. And you know that. I know that, over and over. And and, and by you, saved, you mean foiled plots to blow foiled, major stuff up? and Foiled plots, um, turning, uh, you know, spies our way to all of a sudden we know more and therefore we can preempt things, plan for things. Because people out there are brilliantly devious and well, they, they have plots that are incredibly well, sophisticated, working, right? Yeah. They, and, and they are constantly working against us. Yeah. I mean, that's what drives me crazy about the Republicans today, trying to defend the indefensible with Trump's conduct and defend the Russians. I mean, I sat across tables. I sat in chairs next to Vladimir Putin. He is not a, our friend. He's a scumbag. He's an adversary, and he wants to bring us down. And you know what they're smart about? They could never take us down militarily. Never. They can't take us down economically. They've got a, you know, small economy compared to ours. 
but they can divide us. And they're doing it. And they're doing it every they hit single the home day. Run. And for whatever reason, and we won't speculate about it, for whatever reason, you know, Trump is is in that camp with them. I don't know whether it's his ego, his narcissism. I don't I don't pretend to know. But we see it. We don't have to psychoanalyze him to know that he is an admirer of dictators and in particular Putin. But what bothers me are these Republican senators. They have not only sacrificed their independent judgment. They've lost their mind. They have they have given up any any sense of patriotism, in my view. Do you do you, this is a silly question, but do you know what's going on at that Area 51? I don't believe they're oh aliens. Do you God. believe in aliens? 54? 54, 54, whatever it is. Studio 54. Studio 54. Studio 54. Yeah, right. Do you know what's going on at Studio 54? I, I, I you know what, I'll, t- I'll tell you. If I'd been president, I would have wanted to figure out how to visit. I know. I right. would have wanted to go. Would you take me there with you? Yeah, if I'd been president, I <laughs> right. would have. I would have said, nice. you know, we, we could maybe broadcast. You could interview the aliens. Doesn't, see it, make you, <laughs> doesn't it upset you that yeah. that um, even your fellow Democrats, like when someone's, like you, you said something the other day, I never rule out running mm-hmm. again or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Fine. Well, who cares? Yeah. They're angry. They don't want you to run again. They well, don't want you to, you know, everyone's pissed off. At you. Even your even your allies are pissed. I yeah, mean, some are. Do you, some do aren't. you ever just... Uh, after, you know. Do you just ever want to just lay in bed and say, fuck this, I'm getting out. I mean, I am going to go into full seclusion no. and they're never going to hear from me again. No. First of all, um, that would only delight my adversaries. Um, <laughs> so I would never do that. But secondly, I have this unique perspective, some of which we've been talking you about do. today. I have a unique perspective. I have a particular understanding of the Russian threat. And it's not going to only be Russia. I mean... So you must be laying awake at I night. I do. I worry a lot. Because you know how I, what the shenanigans yes, are. Yes, I worry. I worry a lot. You've negotiated yeah. with mm-hmm. them. You've seen secret intelligence. I have. And you know that you know. There's these guys who phone from Nigeria who phone your home and somehow finagle six grand out of I you know. by doing that. Yeah. And they're brilliant. At yeah. It. Yeah. I can only imagine what's going on when Vladimir Putin sits there and plans against the United States. Well, but you know, you can read the, the indictments against the Russians. And I, you know, a lot of people didn't pay attention to it, but it's very uh, informative and scary. Do you mean the Mueller report? Yeah. The yeah. indictments. Okay. It, the report itself, I think is also worth reading. But if you read the indictments, you know, basically they were like, Hey, Let's do everything we can to elect Donald Trump. I mean, that's those, those are quotes. Those are taken, words. They those said. are words yeah. that taken. And they also said Bernie Sanders, but you know, that's another for another day. Do we day. hate Bernie Sanders? What? Do we hate Bernie Sanders? No, I don't hate anybody. Bernie could have endorsed you quicker. Uh, he could have. He him. hurt me. There's no doubt about it. He hurt me. But going back to the indictments, because that's right. what's really important. Have you ever spoken to Bernie about that? No, no. You don't I mean, talk to him. I don't talk to him. Yeah, I mean, we did when he finally endorsed me and all that. But he, you're upset he, with him. No, I'm disappointed. Disappointed. Okay. okay. So, and, and I hope he doesn't do it again to whoever gets the nomination. Right. Once is enough. We yeah. got, we have to, yeah, Everyone things are very we have to right join now. forces yes. and, you know, people could speculate and, and have some good reason to speculate about how bad it might be with uh, Trump in the white house. Now we know there's no guesswork. We know. Right. And, and we know that given his personality and his, his, his rage um, against anyone who, questions him, Lord knows what he might try to do. So it's time to retire him. But if you look at that indictment, I mean, and, and 60 Minutes actually had a really good show on this the other night where they took the what, what they called the soldier hackers, the Russians who were doing it, and they pieced it all together so that, you know, somebody watching 60 Minutes could have an understanding of how the orders came from the Kremlin. They went to military intelligence. These guys were recruited. They pretended to be Americans. They sowed discord. They went, made all kinds of, uh, you know, phony news to try to influence people. And people who say, oh, that didn't influence. You just mentioned the Nigerian guy's call. Yeah. Somebody gives them $6,000. Right. It's going Advertising on. Advertising spends many billions of dollars to persuade you to do things. Of course, it had an impact on a considerable number of people. This character who owns Facebook. He yeah. won't. Uh, but Boy. Are you pissed? What a disappointment. Yeah. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, yeah. Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg. Right. He, yeah. he, uh, he, you know, just... for him to say, uh, you know, we're not going to take down, you know, fake ads, you yeah. know, total lies, basically, which is what Trump is running now on Facebook against Biden. Right. Um, 
is such an abdication of responsibility. And I, I don't understand what's going through his head. I've heard him try to explain it. He doesn't do a very good job of it. Should be regulated. Listen, I've, I've been in radio be. my whole life. It's regulated. It is. I can't go on and slander you yeah, and, and, and get away with I it. I know. I know. It, because at the beginning, I think people thought it would just be a pass-through. But that's not what it turned out to be. The algorithms are determining so much of what you actually it's see. It's freaky. It is. Could you support Bloomberg? I'll support whoever the Democratic nominee is. I, yeah, I don't know who that's going to be. But why not be an advocate for one person? Let's uh, get behind I, someone. I, I mean, I know them. I, I know them all. I don't. You I don't, don't want to get. In, I don't want to get in the middle. No, I don't want to get in the middle. It's up to the voters to decide. I think Bloomberg would be a good president, but I don't know if he can win. I, I have no idea. We're going to find out because you know he's going to. He's not going to compete in the early contests, I guess. But he's right. going to compete on. on but Super I, Tuesday. I think Biden. So, Buttigieg, interesting, right? He's very interesting. Very smart. Smart mm-hmm. guy. When this guy mm-hmm. speaks, mm-hmm. Yeah. he makes sense. Mm-hmm. But your husband that doesn't was, matter but, but much your, these but, days. But your husband was... <laughs> he had a way of talking he that did. Your made husband, people understand. Your husband was some president. The explainer-in-chief. Yeah. Remember yes, when he right. gave... Definitely You know, was. people forget that in October of 2012, Mitt Romney was ahead. Yeah. That's right. And, um, you know, Bill was out there campaigning for President Obama. Bill spoke at his convention. Because we all know what's at stake. I mean, and, and, and Mitt Romney is a decent man. You know, he's somebody right. who I, I think is an honorable person. Mm-hmm. I may not agree with him, obviously. So now that we can see how one person with so much power can have such a uh, dramatic and, and damaging effect, we got to all get behind whoever gets the nomination. 